Mr. Holmes, what a compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Huh. On kidnapping does not a story make. Stop! A black cat crossed before us. It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps, before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor. After that... Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. The hydration set in, and things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer and placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers for me. To whom I'm grateful. Without their diligence, you would not be standing here and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes, but I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimmy here? Could you help me? <laughs> of course I know. To cut a long story short. satisfy my curiosity you're lucky to find me oh don't swear she saw ghosts in there as too the coppers even went over it must be serious Good evening, Constable. I heard some people talking of ghosts in this warehouse. <sighs> oh, uh, gossips, all of them. An old lady neighbor saw some lights and ghostly shapes in the middle of the night. She heard music too. Turns out this was the warehouse of Grandpa Kujak. He owned a business with theater props for scary shows. I went in and, well, it is a bit creepy, but I... I think it was probably just some kids fooling around. Do you mind if I take a look inside? Not at all. It's like Madame Tussauds, only worse. I'll be on the beat round the pub for the rest of the night. Damned explosion. Good night, sir. contraption. It still works. There was a box in the coffin. It was removed quite recently. They opened the casket and left marks. A herbal odor with an ethylic base. Liquor? <laughs> Who 
is this intended to scare? Phosphorus, used recently. Where is this going? Somebody had fun. Several crates are missing. No brand or markings. It looks like a bulk product. Bottles of various shapes and sizes. I detect a mix of chemicals and aromas. A small cart left those tracks. Inspired by the legend of Sleepy Hollow. Somebody played with phosphorus to give the illusion of ghosts or ectoplasm. In reality, they were here to mix a few ingredients and prepare a solution of some sort. Then they took a box hidden inside the casket. And they left through that gate with a small cart. Dr. Tippett's electric pectobrain, patent medicine of the future. This is a patent medicine. A quick fix at an expensive price that drags the patient slowly into death. May I ask you something? You're lucky to find me. The coffin won't go away and the doctor's too pricey. Where are we? The field hospital? Good evening, sir. Are you the gentleman who sells that intriguing hecto-brain beverage? Good evening, gentlemen. I'm Dr. Thomas Tippett, and yes, it's proud inventor and purveyor. 
Are you a doctor? You seem remarkably young. <laughs> I'm self-educated. I help people in need around these parts with my medicine. Helping, as in bringing to the grave? Uh, that is unfair, sir. The virtues of my invention are to calm the nerves, to stop coughing due to the endless smog, and to help children to sleep. Has your beverage been tested by your peers or any medical authority? I am a doctor, and it appears that you are playing with people's lives, people who place their trust in you to ease their pain. People need help, and drugs are expensive. My formula helps, and it's inexpensive. The product is dispensed from here only, so dose and usage are controlled. I looked into other patented medicines. They contain harmful or useless substrate, and they're sold in respected shops and pharmacies. Do you realize what you are doing? You are playing with people's health. You are a doctor. Take a look at my product. You won't find mercury, radium, lithium, or any other toxic substances drowned in alcohol and sold freely by so-called health professionals. I can show you how I work. Let me help people. Watson, what do you make of this situation? I, I'm not sure. Patent medicines can be a scourge, yes. But he is not entirely wrong in practice. Why the haunted warehouse? Well, nobody was using it, and people are afraid of ghosts. It kept them away until today. What I do is not entirely legal, but I do help people. Man, he's very sick here. It sounds as though those people will need my help. Constable, I'm afraid we saw some troubling signs, unnatural even, inside the warehouse. Dr. Watson here can confirm it, and he's a specialist. It would be best to stay away for now. Really? I'm 99% sure that ghosts don't exist, gentlemen. I won't report this to my colleagues after my shift. Some of them might be the naive sort who scare easy. This is Dr. Watson. We'll take a look at your friend. Freshly dug up treasures, it seems. Everything ends up in a river. It's a good thing these people take something from it. The water has a curious whitish tinge to it. The subject is hyperventilating. He has a pale face and dilated pupils. Pupils, decolorized skin, necrosis. What do you make of this, Doctor? All signs point towards <laughs> acute poisoning. It could possibly be due to chemicals. I won't jump to any conclusions yet. <laughs> Pile of rotten food. It carries danger, but not of the kind that we witnessed. A recent car crash. <laughs> the 
the fish's scales have decolorized. What a disaster. Phenol, a dangerous substance often used as a sanitizer, coming from spayed chemicals. Could you help me? I think I can help you. Barrels of phenol from your company ended up in the canal. It has poisoned people. You will need to clean it up properly. Otherwise, we will inform the authorities. What the? We will call the cleaning brigade immediately. I hope this can stay between us. Gentlemen, the doctor here and I have found the source of the contamination. Spade chemicals will take care of it. That's that's pretty good news. But how long will it take? And what about our friend? Will someone pay for his treatment? Pressurize the company. But for now, get rid of the stained clothes and rinse any phenol-affected skin. No one else should touch the canal today. Thank you. We'll do that. Let's go to the cheap doctor for help. In the mood, mate. Shoo! Pardon me, sir. I am looking for Roy. Uh, not again. Yes, I'm Roy. But I can't help you find your uncle or whoever you've lost. Now, what makes you think I would inquire about missing people? You are the fourth person to ask this week. Just because I work at the port doesn't mean I keep track of everyone who comes here. You say we are not the first to ask you about a disappearance. Do you recall anything about those who came inquiring? Hmm. I only remember the foreign woman. I didn't catch her name, but those are her posters hanging up everywhere. She has badgered me twice now, but I still don't know nothing. And this woman can be found? No clue. She was talking gibberish. May I ask what you're doing here? This is where the ship sank the other day. I'm trying to work out how we'll remove it. Now, where was I?
Have you seen this before? M my card? Where did you dig that up? At a crime scene near Baker Street involving a young servant's kidnapping, I might add. I... I... No. Someone used it without my consent. How else would it end up there? Explosion stopped most traffic coming into the port. Guess I'll be without work for a while. Hello, lad. Is this where I may find Dea? You read the poster? Yes? You know where my brother Girves is? Sadly, no. Well, not yet. I want to speak to Dea. Is she around? Emma. My mother. She got sick after the hot... the fire. Big red smoke. She couldn't breathe, so I took her to the doctor. Now I am in charge. Where did you last see Girves? He worked at a, um, warehouse. This man, Roy Solby, gave him the job. He paid him a ne a necklace. Do you still have the necklace that Solsby gave to Girves? Girves left it near the, um, shrine. I tried to sell it to buy Alma medicine, but... but no one wanted to buy. How would you describe this Soulsby? He was... big and strong. Um... he had a big scary eye. Scary, you say? Yes. Like... uh... like it was made of... Metal. Don't go anywhere. This cheap pendant looks like silver, but it's only made of tin. No surprise the boy couldn't sell it. I miss Girves. Do you think he's okay? establishment. I've seen worse. Greetings, miss. I'm hoping you can help us. We shall soon see. Have you ever heard of a man with a metallic eye? I've seen him even. Dirty Summers is the name. A nasty lout with a silver ball in place of a missing eye. Shudder to ask, but where does one find a dirty Summers? He likely signed on with a ship. I am not one to spy on others, let alone him. Hmm, I see. My advice, keep away from him. I heard tell of a recent explosion in the port. What do you know of it? Ah, yes. Something exploded in a ship's cargo hold. 
Caused a terrible blaze. The sky was red with smoke till morning. Where precisely did it occur? The ship sank near the third pier, next to the dockyard. Your clothes are already tight, and soon they won't fit at all. How far along are you? I... Uh, I thought I'd hidden it better. How did you know? Are you a doctor? In a manner of speaking. He's not. He merely has the ego of one. I apologize, miss. Mr. Holmes is fond of his observations, but I am the doctor here, not him. Do you need any help? I'm fine, thank you. I would rather not discuss my condition, nor let word of it spread. Doesn't look like anything to me. Doesn't look like anything to me. Never heard of it. Doesn't look like anything to me. What do you know about this poster? A foreign woman asked to put it up. She's plastered them all over the port. Any clues as to her whereabouts? None. It was hard to understand what she was saying. Doesn't look like anything to me. Never heard of it. Have you been drinking? Doesn't look like anything to me. Have you been drinking? Are you familiar with a Roy Soulsby? Roy Soulsby? Hmm. I know the name, but he's not one of my regulars. My guess is that he works somewhere around here. What can I get you? What are you gawping at? Mr. Soulsby, you know more than you're letting on. W what makes you say that? A man named Dirty Summers was involved in some recent kidnappings across London. He used your name as a cover for his deeds. What? Really? That doesn't mean I'm involved, though. Your calling card was found at the crime scene. That's enough to make you a suspect. You cannot be serious. It's true. And that's before mentioning your gold watch. It's brand new and awfully expensive for a customs officer. Clearly you have found yourself another source of income. I'm sure Scotland Yard will be delighted to investigate further. All right, stop. Look, it's not as it seems. I did not partake in the kidnappings. 
I'm all ears, Mr. Soulsby. Yes, I know, Summers. He paid me to turn a blind eye to his business in the warehouse area. Just that, on my word. You did not tell me which warehouse he used? I do not recall, but I use red paint to mark unsupervised warehouses. Ought to be one of them. What else can you say of Summers? He is a regular at the Cursed Mermaid. Goes there with his crew almost every evening. What for? I don't know. I assumed just for a drink. I have the feeling that you know more about Dirty Summers than you're letting on. I have nothing more to add, sir. Enough. I have hard evidence that Summers was involved in recent kidnappings across London. I'm not surprised. So what? Customs officer, Roy Soulsby, testified that Summers was a regular here. You must know something about his business. All I know is his drinks order. If the lives of the missing do not concern you, then I would urge you to think about your unborn child. Are you threatening me? Many people are missing and the main suspect based himself in your establishment. One word to Scotland Yard and your life takes a turn for the worse. Now, spare yourself the trouble and tell me all you know. Okay, okay. Summers hired my private room. I think he used it to recruit people, but I haven't seen him in a few days. He paid me cash, so I paid him no attention. Nor did I touch anything inside. Here's the key, go and do what you will. Just leave me out of it. Strange symbols. I don't recognize them. Five shillings. That won't go far.
Really, Holmes, this ought to be beneath you. As my brother would say, it is for the greater good. Well oiled and well maintained. Fit for a crank. hidden passage, just as I expected. Wait here, Watson, and keep an eye on the doors. I'll scout the premises. Will do. Be careful down there. been under the port of London all along. Is it an illusion? The only way forward is the abyss. to breathe here. What is that? Oh, no! Unspeakably revolting. is already spinning. When will this end? Ah! 
Oh, that is truly revolting. Frozen and pulsing almost like it has a heart. Stone. It almost feels alive. Did I get out? John? What is it, Holmes? Watson? Holmes, where are you? Fine, Watson. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Fine? By Jove, you should have heard the way you called out my name. It was just a game of shadows. I'm glad. This place gives me the chills. What are we dealing with? Something that's finally interesting. Someone used mud to draw a cross in a rectangle. Why? Fine rope work, cut by a finer blade. <laughs> These clothes were crudely cut off someone. An American, judging by the style. I hear you. <laughs> His abdomen is severely bloated. Cyanosis of the lips, marks on the neck. This man was strangled. Q. 
Kjernak, Flegethor, Lebumna, Siaha, Inguft. At least two dozen pendants, all identical and made of tin. An American passport, Amos Colby. Someone got their hands dirty painting this with blood. I've never seen a pattern like this before. Old blood stains. This box contained a narcotic substance, much like the one in Kimihia's brazier. Black Edelweiss Institute established 17-something. It seems made for simple experiments. I wager they could not afford a better set. Fin Glui, Maglanafa, Kutulu, Rilia, Waganagal, Fatagan. What? What on? What on earth? How is that possible? Potent. This sensor has more narcotic residues. What on earth? It looks like the scribbling of madmen. <laughs> A small blood stain, but not serious. strength it would take to carry this crate, let alone break it. Deep scratches left in a frenzy. Oh, potent. This sensor has more narcotic residues. Miserable food. Mass produced. Holmes, are you sure you've left no stone unturned? <laughs> These clothes are missing buttons. They were forcefully removed. <laughs> Dumper. A staple of lecturemen's attire in Nepal, gathered from dozens of people at the very least.
many people were brought to this place. Their abductors stripped off their clothes and discarded them in a pile. The prisoners were kept in a soporific trance by the use of narcotics. A few tried to resist, but alas, in vain. After a few days, everyone was stuffed in a crate and sent elsewhere. Only one captive was left behind. He was strangled to death on this altar. Happening, Holmes. Calm yourself. Cannot be. What is it? Oh, my God. Please tell me we found all we needed to, Holmes. I think we found a bit more than that. Yet we have no clue as to where those people have been taken. And that's where you're wrong, Watson. We have more than enough. I just need to connect the dots. How about you pack your suitcase in the meantime, my dear fellow? Just in case. Dr. Watson, how does a trip to Switzerland sound to you? It sounds unexpected. What makes you think we should head there? It's all about the box with narcotics and Mr. Colby's clue, the cross inside a rectangle. Put two and two together, add a dash of research, and what do you get? The Black Edelweiss Institute in Interlaken, Switzerland. If we hurry, we can still catch tonight's train. As grateful as I have been for your company, Dr. Watson, I'm afraid you shall have to investigate Edelweiss alone. Alone? Mr. Holmes, I fear you overestimate my abilities. Nonsense. You are a military man, a bastion of British courage. I'm no such thing. As a doctor, I avoided most combat, save for one dreadful day. My troop was ambushed in a village with innocents caught in the crossfire. Too many to help. The man with the rosary. He was one of them? A translator, yes. We were trapped. Six soldiers and myself. I thought it was the end. But Lieutenant Paget refused to go quietly. The men prepared for a final stand. I rose to follow, but Paget shook his head. He told me to run. That I had other men to save. They charged. And I fled through the rear. So you see, Mr. Holmes, 
I am a coward. The logic seems inescapable. Yes. You, a surgeon by trade, would have been perfectly useless in that conflict. What? No. And how many men have you helped since? Ailments eased, troubles tended? No more than a handful. Truth be told, I have become somewhat of a recluse. How many people could you help with 30 years ahead of you? Dozens? Hundreds? Hatchet was correct. You can cease your self-recrimination. Holmes, I... I don't know what to say. I would start with, I am Dr. John Watson, may I look around? The Edelweiss staff will doubtless be eager to show off their facility to a fellow physician. I have already taken the liberty of sending a letter on your behalf to request a visit. And what of you? I shall be pursuing other avenues. Should you see anything troublesome or improper, simply notify the local authorities. Otherwise, try a little analysis yourself. You know my methods. Apply them. <laughs> 